Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves us with a true agape love. He wants to pour that love into our heart, write that love on our mind, and keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace. Because we are His children. We've come to Him. We've laid out our heart before Him. We've laid out all our thoughts before Him. We don't want any part of us unseen by God. We know that He can see everything. But it's when we allow our heart and mind to be open to Him that He can keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace. He's our resting place. He is our banner. The banner that waves over us love. <laughs> the banner of love that waves over us is God. It's Him who is love that is waving over you. He's waving over me, waving in your household. That love, that love is the love that drives fear out. It's because God's love is that unconditional love that brings you in and protects you from all the evil that would pry and pull and demand your soul. Everywhere where we are weak, God is strong. And He's strong in His Word, the Word that created the world and all that there is in it. The word that he has sent into your heart and put in your mouth. And that's what the word that we speak throughout our life, throughout our, our, our existence on this planet. Our whole being should be radiating. God is salvation. You see, this is what Jesus came and gave us. He gave us the salvation of God. He is. God sent his son to save us from judgment, the judgment of God, to save us from the hatred and the bitterness of the enemy that hates our souls, that wants us to die and be separated from God forever. That enemy. But there's no one greater than the Father who loves us. Jesus has brought us into the house of the Father, and that's where we live. That's where we thrive. That's where we stay. And we can do it throughout our situations and circumstances. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because why? God is with me. The Lord is He's with me. He's right here in the midst of me, wanting me to go forward in all things, understanding that He is there. Hmm? The only way to have that ready mind, that clear mind, that sound mind, is to know that God's there. There, He's with us. It's not something we will in our flesh. This is spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication here. We're learning to walk in the Spirit. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us His Spirit. When He's given us His Spirit, He's given us a new Spirit. And we learn how to walk in the Spirit. We learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit, listening, having our ears attuned to His voice. And the power of God. It, it's in you. It's at first Second Timothy chapter Second Timothy chapter one verse seven, I think. It says For we have not been given a spirit of fear. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but one of power, love and and a sound mind, a clear mind, a ready mind. We're able to handle the situations of life without falling into the ditch. Without panicking and falling all apart. Whatever the situations are. Greater is he that is in you, the one who is telling you the truth. The one who is reminding you of what God said concerning this matter. Therefore, we don't lean on our own understanding about anything. In all of our ways, we're acknowledging the one who's the guardian of our heart. 
the bishop of our soul, the Jesus, the keeper. He's already gone before us, taking all the matters of this life, of the sin that, that got nailed to the cross, the sin that he bore for us to be able to live in the freedom. The freedom that God planned long ago when he said, enter my rest. We enter the rest of God by faith, by believing what God said. It's the same thing that happened in the very beginning when God created the world and everything that's in it. And he planted the trees in the garden and said, if you eat from this tree, you will die. You're going to bring separation between me and you. It's the same thing. He put those trees in the garden so that mankind could make a choice. And we make a choice every day, every minute, every hour. We're in a place where we make choices. Well, when anything, you know, it's not leaning on how I feel about the absurdities of life. It's leaning on what God said. And letting him work it together for my good. What I don't understand, I let go. And I say, Father, you know. And then the prophecy comes. Just like it is in the book of Ezekiel, right? Where he prophesies to the bones. You just wait on the Lord. When we wait, he renews the strength. He gives the wisdom. He gives the knowledge. Because, we're see, we're waiting on him. This doesn't have to be a long wait. When we trust what God has written, what he has said, then we're not going to be so quick to lean on our own understanding when this world keeps falling apart the way that it is. Yeah, we'll hurt over some things, but we'll take the hurt to the cross. We'll take the hurt to the throne room of grace where we find the help and the mercy that we need. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I think we need to establish the fact that God is with us. You see, there's no fear in love. I probably said this already, but there's no fear in God's perfect love. And we are in this love. We are so in Him that we can't be separated from Him. No matter what the situation is, no matter how we feel today, no matter what our body is, is commanding or being tempted to do, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. I'm going to keep on encouraging us until we are standing and walking in the Spirit, walking with the Spirit of God, knowing that He's there every moment. Knowing that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just. If we confess them, if we come out and say, Father, forgive me and help me, Lord God. Strengthen me with strength in the inner man. Help me to get up in my most holy faith, Father God. You see how I feel. Just commit your way to God. Because when we, when we commit our way to, get to God, we're submitting our heart and mind. We're submitting everything that's coming against the knowledge of God before God. And we're demanding help. And the strength of God comes and fortifies you. You'll go do what you need to do. And that feeling that so grabbed hold of you to tempt you to do evil will dissipate because it doesn't have a place to stay. It doesn't have a place to, to stay. Jesus was going to the cross. He knew where he had to go. He said, the prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. There's no darkness in God. God is light. There's no darkness in him. There's nothing evil in God. And you, you, we want to call it evil because sin in this world is evil. But God, he, he doesn't like sin. We're called to hate sin and reverence God, to lift him up. We're going to expose darkness. We need to expose the darkness that's in us, that's still lingering in us and hanging out there. We need to know the difference between God's voice, our voice, and the devil's voice. And, and know that no temptation, no evil temptation, it does not come from God. It doesn't come from him. We've been 
brought into a place of, of right living. But it's not through our own vain imagination, it's through the knowledge of God. He never said that you wouldn't be tempted. He said to overcome the temptation. We overcome it. When sin was crouching at the door, ready to, to, to have Cain, go back to Genesis and read it, chapter 4. When sin was crouching at the door, wanting to have Cain, because of Cain's, look at Cain had this really bad attitude. He all he had to do was submit to God. The same thing that we have to do. And God said, look, sin is crouching at the door, waiting, waiting to have you. Peter was told that, that Satan wanted to sift him like wheat. That means those words were going to keep repeating themselves in his head until he would finally give in and give up. Say, what's the use? I've failed God, and I can't never come back into his presence. Let me go back and just do this. I'll be a fisherman for the rest of my life, fishing for real fish. Yeah? But he didn't give up. He didn't give in. He got on his knees. Jesus said, I'll pray. I'm going to be praying that your faith does not fail you. God tells Cain... Sin is crouching at the door waiting to have you. I want you to overcome it. I want you to master sin. So James chapter 1 says, As a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Well, how do you feel when... The, the situation that is tempting you is dirty. <laughs> it's nasty. Count it all joy that you're being tempted? It didn't say count it all joy that you you fell for it. And you, you, you laid down in it. Huh? That you went against the knowledge of God for you. It didn't say count that all joy. See, the joy that we're counting... Is the joy that we have in the Lord, that the Lord is my strength. He's my wisdom. He is all that I need. Jesus said when the disciples were, were falling asleep and, and he told them to stay awake. Can you stay awake? See, I'm using all of this scripture towards everything that comes against the knowledge of God that would lead us in, an, in the wide path instead of staying on the narrow path. Instead of walking out our, our, our soul's salvation in the view of God, in the knowledge of His ways. This is not legalism. This is not law. If, if it is a law, it's the law of love. It's the law of I want to abide in Him who loves me forever. I want to abide in the one who keeps my heart and mind in perfect peace. I, I love this Father. I love this Lord Jesus. I love this eternal life that you've given me. And I will not throw your blood away. I won't throw your words away. Because you're the only one who's ever spoken true love to me. You're the only one who has spoken true life to me. You are the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other place in this life I want to be. So I'm going to keep on talking about crucifying the flesh. Getting the soul in the position where it submits to God. It's love. Because that's what it's really submitting to. It's not submitting to rules and regulations. The whole world can do anything it wants to do. And the Bible says everything's permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. It's not healthy. It's not wise. Don't go against your own body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and when we go against our bodies, we are destroying the temple of God, even if it's a cigarette, especially even if it's a cigarette. All these things that kill the temple. Our life is not our own. We've given it to Christ. We've given it not to religion. We've given it to love. 
and I want us to master master ourselves master our master sin it doesn't have to be in us it's not supposed to be there shine the light on it I gotta be saying this for a reason somebody's feeling tempted for what for, for whatever sin it is and if you don't know I'll ask the Lord to reveal your heart to you so that the scales can come off and you can be free and walk in the true freedom that Jesus has brought for us. He bought it. He went to the cross and he bought it. He purchased us with his blood. We have the name above every name that can be named where there is evil. <laughs> you know, I was going to say rather is evil or good, but that's it doesn't have anything to do with good except receive the goodness of God in your heart and in your mind. Receive the goodness of God in your ears so that you can dwell in, if, if we have to be here in this land of the living, let God's goodness shine through your life. Let God's goodness shine through my life. So the joy that we are in is the fact that the light of Christ has shined in our hearts. We are overcoming everything that comes against the knowledge of God. We are his children. We are his house. We are his workmanship created for good works. So therefore, we take everything that rises against the knowledge of God, every care, we put it before him. And we say, Lord, here I am. I belong to you. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. My eyes are on you. You don't have to say what I said verbatim. You say what the whole what what you need to say because your heart is for God. When our hearts are for Him who truly, truly, truly loves us, there's nothing He won't do for you. I, I don't mean something crazy. I mean. He wants to draw you in and wave his banner of love over you. He wants to just keep your heart and mind. He just loves us so much. He loves you so, so very much. I, I Man, every day I'm talking about the same thing. It seems I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but not really sorry at all. Because we need to be pulled in, drawn in to who God is so that we can be what we are and not so overwhelmed by the flesh. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want to walk in the spirit. I want to walk with the spirit. Someone said a long time ago to me that, oh, you can't, um, your mind can't be saved. That's not true. Because the word renews my mind. It says that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm not blind anymore. I can see the Lord. I, I sense him in my heart. Even when, even when I don't sense him, I know that he's here. James chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 2 says, no, verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. You might wonder why we need patience. And, 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 and at the same time, I feel like that is such, so annoying. Why are you telling me that I need patience? Because patience is listening to the voice of God, is waiting on that voice. Is Oh, I know it in my being. I know that it's waiting on the Lord because we are so before him in everything. But we need to be made aware of it. Patience doesn't have to take 40 years. It doesn't. 
patience could be in one moment. Patience is something that happens in our spirit. We're waiting, but we're waiting on the voice of the Lord. And we can hear him because we're not arguing and battling with all the thoughts and the situations that are there. Because we acknowledge that God is here with us, in us. Hmm? Yes, he's in heaven above. But he sent his spirit into our hearts. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience. <laughs> Trouble works patience. Do you remember what Jesus said now? In John chapter 14, he said, My peace I leave with you. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives give I unto you peace. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because I'm there. I'm with you. Jesus was going away in just a little while. But he's assuring them that he's coming back. That if he, he, he has to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. Romans chapter 5 again, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation works patience. And patience experience. And hope. And hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. God has given us his Son and sent his love into our hearts. And this love strengthens. This love supplies our need. God is love and he's in us. The peace of God is in us. The more we recognize that God is right here in the midst of us, the more we're going to relax and trust him. The more that when temptation comes, we overcome the temptation with the joy of the word of God that's in our heart. The Holy Spirit reminds us of all truth. The Holy Spirit is love. He, he brings out the nature of God's love, and God's love overrides everything that's coming against the knowledge of God. Therefore, we have joy. It's the nature of God. And we celebrate. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience, but, okay, but let patience have her perfect work bring you into maturity, in other words, that you may be mature and entire, lacking nothing. If you need wisdom, you can ask for it, and God's going to give it to you. He's going to give you the strength to resist evil. He's going to give you good thoughts. <laughs> I'm not saying that you're a mannequin. What I'm saying is that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. You're not a computer to be programmed. You're not some, what is it, AI system that's been programmed for, you know, to operate for mankind. Somebody programmed it. Somebody had a motive of why they programmed it, and they programmed the motive in there. They have a reason for this artificial intelligence. It's not alive. It's been, it's a program. A program that learns and grows, and it learns from the things that it hears. I remember learning computer language in the um, data processing school when computers weren't so big back then, and we had to learn the language. And there was this thing I remember called if, when, when if, but when, something like that. I'll, <laughs> I can't remember exactly how it goes, but if one thing didn't happen, then it was going to, it would change the direction and do it another way. It was just a process that the 
that the computer had to go through, but we're the ones that programmed the information into the computer so that it would the program would respond the way we needed it to respond. Well, this system that's out today isn't a living soul. It is something that has been programmed by people to operate in a certain way. And it gathers information from well, what, it, what it thinks is all the variables that it can operate from. We have a variable that cannot be reckoned with. We have the creator of all the ends of the earth and everything seen yet not seen and heard yet not heard. The creator of all things. All wisdom is his. So artificial intelligence, if we can call it that, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, it cannot take the place of the sovereign God, of the Most High God, of El Elyon El Che, the living God. And when we rely on Him and let the Holy Spirit raise us up, learn how to walk in the Spirit, we're going to see the goodness of God in the, land of the, in the land of the living. We're going to see the goodness of God in our lives. We're going to see salvation going forward more than you've ever seen it before. Because the people around you see you. They see who you're, you're with. They see who you're with. They don't see him, but they see that there's something about you that's greater. You're not fearful and afraid. You're bold and courageous, and you're speaking the words of life. Well, i got to get ready to go. Uh, the title was Deliverance is Due. And I felt like saying that this, this is a strong word that I heard this morning. I feel like the word for the day is, and the day to come, and the days to come is Deliverance is Due. Yeah, God's delivering us from strongholds and things that are coming against the knowledge of his children, the knowledge of who he is and who we are in him. Yeah. But it's a different deliverance. We are trees of righteousness. We are trees of righteousness and there is a work to be done in this earth. And we are the vessels he's chosen to work through. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Salvation is for everybody. And God wants to help other people to come close to him through you and your life. So be God's workmanship that has been created in his son. You're the likeness of Christ Jesus and there's a lot of work to do. And it's not too hard for you. It is not, it is not, it is not too hard to do. The wisdom is right there for you. So trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. And then the last verse is from James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man or woman, woman or man, that endures temptation. For when you are tried you will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Notice how that word love is in there again. Because we're going to love him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and all of our strength. And we're going to see the glory of God in the land of the living. We're going to see his goodness overtake us. Hmm? And while that's happening, we're meeting him in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. And we're going to see all those people. All those people that love God because of our lives. Hmm? They're going to be caught up in the air too. And you, boy, are you going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice in the heaven above. We're going to rejoice. Well, I love you all. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye. Or good night.